The sun was shining down on that log. And Hank said, Get you. He just let the people see it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really beautiful. Yeah, it is. And it is about nine o'clock. It just lifted up out of the way. Beautiful day. Let's turn in our book in a Bible. Romans chapter 1. We start out in verse 16. Romans chapter 1, you say? Yeah. Romans chapter 1. <clears throat> Starting out in verse 16. God says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. For therein is the righteous of God revealed from faith to faith, that it is written, The just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it to them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his internal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became foolish and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to, to, to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. 
for this cause God gave them up and to vile affection for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural cause of a woman burned in her lust one toward another. Men with working, with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that re that recompense of their error which is met. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to, the, to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, a covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, <laughs> malignity, and whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despisers, <laughs> proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, a covenant breakers, without <laughs> natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. <coughs> Father, as we come to you this morning, Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for another privilege. Lord, to be in thy house this morning. Oh, I pray that you will take this message, Lord, and use it for thy glory. Father, I pray that I just step over to the side, Lord, and let you preach this message, Lord, as you see fit. Father, I pray that someone here in the church or, or someone watching on the internet or listening on the radio, Lord, would receive this message and apply it to their heart, Lord. Father, we pray that this message will not go out, Lord. Father, we ask these things in our precious holy name. In Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, a lot of people, they say they're a Christian. walk up and down the street here and ask a hundred people are you a Christian? And they'll say yeah. And you can follow them through town and I'm not saying judging them I'm saying <coughs> judge the fruit <coughs> judge the fruit that they buy. You'll not say anything Christian about it. Everybody wants to be a Christian. But nobody wants to walk the walk, to talk the talk. There's a lot of people that claim to be Christians that never, ever shows any fruit. Never buys any fruit. A Christian is going to have God on their mind. Christian is going to try to be a witness. A Christian is going to try to help people in need. And I know the day we live in, you can't help everybody that's in need. Because you've got so many people that wants to make you think they're in need when in, re in reality they don't even want to work. If a man don't work and keep up his family. He don't need no charity. I mean, I know people get sick and get disabled and can't do what they want done. But if you take a man that ain't never worked, or a woman that 
won't never work to keep up her kids. Or, or what if they got kids when they need a little money? They hit the church. You know? And they'll come in and they want to do all kinds of things, but once they get their money, they're gone. You don't never see them no more. This is, this is ungodliness. That's all it is. That's all you can make of it. People who claim to be Christians and yet never show never bear no fruit. And there's a lot of people in this world today. Say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. Well, where do you go to church at? Well, uh, 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 you know, they have to claim it. Well, they go to church at Somebody asked me, I don't have to think. If somebody asked me before I go to church, I tell them I go to downtown chapel. Amen. I don't have to spit and stutter, try to think that through. I know a girl come to mom and dad's house one time. She was asking for money. And mom said, where do you go to church at? She goes, I go to First Baptist at Nine Hill. And I've been all over Nine Hill, and I ain't never seen no First Baptist church over there. <laughs> I told Mama, I said, don't give her no money. She don't need no money. She's just out for what she can get. Anybody that lie about the church she goes to, ain't no more help. I know just about every community has First Baptist Church. But not every community has one. Now, I either don't have one. Marble don't have one. Uh, help me out here, Daniel. Tell us what other old towns don't have a First Baptist Church. Ranger don't have one. What? Ranger don't have one. Amen. Hotson don't have one. Hanging Dog don't have one. Uh, Ebenezer don't have one. Just because you live in that area, you might think you're fooling people by telling them you, you go to Hanging Dog First Baptist Church or the Ranger First Baptist Church. People are smarter than that. Amen? Yeah. Most people are. Yeah. And if you really need help, don't lie about where you go to church. If you if you really need help, don't lie about where you go. Don't lie about going. Say, I'm not in a church right now. That's what we do. That's what I'd rather hear. Somebody tell the truth. I don't go to church right now. Oh, that's going to give me the opportunity to, to talk to them. I don't want them to lie to me about where they go to church. Because I'm not the type of pastor that's going to try to drag them on from their church to our church. As long as they go to church, that's fine and dandy. Right. If they don't go to church, if they need help, really need help, and they don't go to church, that's fine and dandy too. That's what Christians are supposed to do. Help people. That's actually need help. But this right here is talking about the ungodliness that goes on by people who claim to be Christians. How many times you heard somebody talk and every two words they say they're taking God's money and God? That ain't a Christian, friend. That's a put on. They can take God's name in vain every time they open their mouth. They're not a Christian. I can take you to, well, I won't say Lord, but I can take you somewhere in this county and show you two people that come to church every Sunday that sit here and talk outside the church. It's you do this. You do that. Every time they talk. Yeah, 
우는 좀 슬픈데 뭐지 않아? 여기가 예. 이거 크라 맞아. Baby, who are you talking about? How much he loves you? How he wants to help, baby.
There's I know preachers that'll get up and tell you a bald faced lie behind the pulpit. Something ain't even ain't even in the Bible. Just talking outside. We used to have a pastor that tried to tell us that there's a dark ring around hell. And the ones that get saved and they die before they have a chance to do any works, that's where they're at. I've searched, I've searched the Bible over and over and over and over, and I ain't found no dark ring around here. That is a bald faced lie out of the pit of hell. That pastor ain't got no business behind the pulpit telling people stuff like that. He believes that. You must be using different Bible than King James Version because King James Version says nothing about that. about no uh, uh, dark ring around heaven. And everybody's going to be stuck in if they don't do no, if they don't have time to do works before they die. I mean, I, I realize there's people that stayed in the hospital and they die. I've heard of people dying or getting saved 50 minutes. I ain't, I ain't gonna tell them. I ain't gonna tell nobody that they're gonna be stuck in the dark ring around the head and they're gonna be in the door of heaven like they do that works or you know have time to do works. That's trying to put self up on the pedestal the way the way I look at it. Tell them a lie like that. There is people that take this Bible and twist it so bad that it'll confuse the best of you. Amen. And they call themselves preachers. Exactly. Tell me get the word and show it to me. You ever hear something? Because <laughs> nine times out of ten, they're going to end up changing their story when you tell them to show it to you in the Bible. Unless one of them other Bibles has that ring around heaven in it. I don't know. I ain't never read one all the way through. When I see it in that King James Version, I can just pull it because I don't want no part of it. You know, it says in the Bible, only going to be. Prophets and false prophets. Yes. And right there, if you do that, he's false prophet. That's right. <clears throat> and the world is full of them. Yep. That's why everybody that comes to church needs to carry their Bible. To follow the message. Follow the scripture. To make sure, number one, pastor has an inkling of what he's talking about. Now, I'm not a smart man. There's questions asked of me just about every day that I can't answer about the Bible because I'm not that smart. There's things that I can read in the Bible and I can read in the Bible and I can read it 500 times and I still can't understand it. Well, that's that's a smart way to go. Find out a man's belief before you decide to follow that man. I mean, don't follow me. Follow Christ. Amen. Well, but, no, that's in the Bible. When I asked you. Yeah. I don't know exactly what about, but he's not going to be Right, right. He done. Everybody in church will have their Bible reading. I mean, there's words in here that I can't uh, pronounce. And sometimes I get a little bit ahead of myself and I read stuff backwards. Is that what they call it? Uh, yeah, that's what they call it. But there's times that I have to back up and start over because I realize I put the words in a different, in a different place than where they're supposed to be. And that's 
changing the Word of God. If I if I just read on through, I'm not reading the Scriptures because they ought to be read. So follow me. And if I make a mistake, call me out. Because I'm human. I make mistakes. I get my, I don't know if it's my vision, but my vision is getting worse. I mean, I have to hold the Bible up here to see it. But, uh, make sure your preacher knows what he's talking about. I'm still blessed that God's going to give me a message to preach someday that I ain't going to understand the, the scriptures and what they mean. He ain't never done that to me yet. But it's possible he could do that to make me learn. He won't. I mean, but I'm scared to death. I'm going to get up here and say, well, I'm supposed to preach on this, but I don't know nothing about it. He said, by the way, God going to put up on you that you can't handle it. You know? Right. Exactly. God will not put more on us than what we are capable That's right. of doing. But that thought still enters my mind. I guess that's Satan's doing that, you know. But he's, he's always putting in my mind. One of these days you're going to have a message and you ain't going to know what you're talking about. But you know, like we talked about last week, you know, you get up there and uh, you know, Change, you won't say something, but you get a different thing to it, you know. Yeah. That's hard. It's hard. It well, I, I've been up here before, and God revealed stuff to me while, I'm, while I was up here. And and I don't have no problem with that, because that's learning. And that's what I want to do. I want to learn what I don't understand. I want to be able to understand it. Because I feel that a pastor... He's asked a question by his his flock. He needs to know how to answer it, or to know how to find the answer. Yeah, he did. If he don't know it, be honest. Yeah, that's the point of it. Yeah. Because I mean, I try to keep my messages simple. I don't want to go over nobody's head, and I'm not saying there's anybody in here that's done it. I'm not saying that. But I try to keep my messages to where everybody can understand. If there's a five-year-old kid in here, I want you to be able to understand what I'm trying to, trying to say, what I'm trying to get out. I want it to be simple. I'm not going to come in here and use big words that nobody's ever heard of before. Try to impress nobody because they ain't the one person I have to impress. And that's God. And I don't have to impress him because he knows what I know. That's right. So there's no point in even trying to impress God because God is the one that gives it to you. And if you try to impress him, you're not you're not preaching what he gave you. You're boasting. Yeah, you're boasting. And we read about that, about people boasting and, yep. and uh, people who uh, you know, turn things around. That's why God gave us this beautiful day to God. I tried to get up here and say, well, you can thank me for this beautiful day because I pray to God. Ain't that kind of taking the credit? For this beautiful day. I don't want him to do that. I want to thank him that he gave it to me. Yes. Amen. But I don't want to take the credit for it. I didn't have nothing to do with it. I don't have a thing to do with anything that happens here in this church. I'm, I'm the pastor. All of our blessing, all of our uh, all of our good times, all of the spirit that's in this church, it ain't from me. 
Good to see God in himself. Amen, amen. I can't bring nothing in on this dirt. As far as uh, blessings or anything like that. Now, I could come in and be like one of these other preachers that tries to turn everything backwards to what the Word said. But I'm not going to do that. First of all, I don't want to answer to God for that. Second of all, y'all are my family. And I don't want to do nothing to steer my family in the wrong path. Can you understand that? What I say, as simple as it may be, or as boring as it may be, I want it to come to God. I want it to be what God wants his message. Don't look at me as a preacher. I may stand up here. But I want to step aside and let God do the preaching. Because if it comes from God, you can take it to the bank. That's right. Amen. If you take something that I say, I'm bad with it. It gets a little confused at times. You can ask my wife. I don't want to confuse nobody. Confusion. You know who the author of, of confusion is? Satan. Satan is the author of confusion. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to say anything. To try to stir up trouble. To try to confuse anybody. I'm up here behind this pulpit. This is sacred ground right here to me. This is the most sacred ground on earth behind a pulpit. And I want God's respect to be happening behind this pulpit. Amen. If we got a group of singers coming in, and they got somebody that's living with somebody that ain't married. They're not going to sing if I find out about it. They might get away with it if I don't know about it. If I know about it, they ain't going to sing. Because this is sacred ground, and they ought to be sacred people behind you. Singing. Preaching, teaching, whatever. They don't live what they're singing about. They don't live what they're teaching about. If they don't live what they're teaching about, they have no business behind God's pulpit. <coughs> Amen. Amen. But we need to be careful. I don't care who your who your pastor. I'm, I'm talking to people on the internet and radio. I don't care who your pastor is. You need to have your Bible in your hand and following him in the scripture to know that he is preaching God's word. Because there's so many out there today that is teaching preaching what you want to hear what the world wants to hear oh Joel Osteen looks up there and fires back smiles real big he says there are plenty of ways to heaven there are many ways for you to get to heaven friend I'm here to tell you there's only one way to get to heaven and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ you can't pray to Murray to get to heaven. You can't go in a booth and pray to the priest to get to heaven. The priest ain't going to take you no more. <coughs> you have got to bow before Jesus. You've got to admit your sin. And you've got to let him know that you believe in him. And that you don't want to die. Come into your heart. 
You ain't no true lazy man. Somebody else can do that for you. Mama can't do it. Daddy can't do it. Grandpa can't do it. <coughs> Only Jesus can save you. You know, we was talking in Sunday school about a lot of things that we've been taught all of our lives. And if we study the Bible, we're going to find some things that we were taught that ain't necessarily right. It's, it's called tradition. Because Grandpa believed that. And because great, 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 great Grandpa believed that. Don't mean that we have to believe it. We have, we have to believe what's in the Bible. And I guarantee you, from Genesis <laughs> to Revelation, you'll not find the first line in this Bible. It's all God's Word. It's all God's truth. There's, there's things that's worded different in this Bible that can confuse people because they're not grounded. Now you take somebody kids in faith, never seen the Bible in their life. They take it home and start reading it. Let's say they read that whole Bible in a week's time. They're gonna find things in there that well, what's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? I've been preaching since 2015. And I still <coughs> open the Bible. Well, what's this thing? <coughs> What is this? What's this talking about? I got to understand. Like I said, I'm not the smartest brick in the world. There's things that other people might read one time, and praise the Lord, it's won me that. But I'd have to read it five or six times to get what it said. Walk off and leave it, and then come back and read it again to understand it. And there's things that. I think that they meant for us to know to be uh, real life. Because I believe when we get to heaven and we're in our perfect body and in our perfect mind, I believe we won't have to ask nobody whether we'll be here or here. We'll be that close. You know, we were talking about closeness this morning in uh, Sunday school. I don't care how close you are to God. There's always room for improvement. I think I preached on that a couple of Sundays ago, or maybe in two or three months ago. But no matter how good your faith is, how good we think our faith is. There's a lot of people that like to ask you that they think their faith's good, but there's always room for improvement. No matter how close you are to God. I like to think that I'm real close to God. But there's always always room for improvement. I'm not a perfect man, and I never will be until I reach heaven. But once I reach heaven, I'll be a perfect man. We'll have a perfect life. We won't have to worry and go glasses and still can't see. We'll be able to see perfect. Sometimes I have trouble figuring out what Daniel's saying because he's not a real loud talker. I don't think I got wax built up in my ears or just got a lot of peanut butter from where I used to put peanut butter some brown for a long time. But it's hard for me to understand what Daniel, and I'm not picking on Daniel. There's a lot of people like that. They don't speak loud and, and I have to get right up next to them, you know, so I can understand what they're saying. Thank God when I get to heaven, I won't need that. They won't be no little 
shoes in heaven? No glasses? No hearing aids? No wooden legs? Praise God, we're going to have perfect eyes. I'm looking forward to that day. And I trust that everybody here is looking forward to the day that they can be born of flesh. Can you imagine shaking hands with a man who saved you? A man who sealed a lot of us? I, I'd say everybody in here has had a healing at one time in their life. At least one. <laughs> There won't be no social distancing in heaven. There won't be no mask to wear in heaven. There ain't going to be no coronavirus in heaven. Praise God. This thing's going to be perfect in heaven. I'm looking to it. I'm praying that each and every one of you. That's the message.